a quick one here. This is uh, the first sanding step. So I, I finished kind of the cutting part, but the first sanding is also the finish shaping of the stone. Um, and I'm doing that with this little piece of sandpaper on the end of my zuper. Um, and for those of you that cut with a lapidary, this is about like cutting with a, a, a 600 wheel on, a, on an 8 inch wheel. Uh, it cuts quick, um, but it, it's smooth. Um, first of all, it, it's uh, aluminum oxide, so it doesn't cut that much. Um, and secondly, it's not moving that fast. So I, I leave it at a, at a low speed, and I'm holding it by hand and moving it around and around and up and down and through all these things. And I'm not showing you all this stuff, not because I, I'm not doing it, but rather because, um, you know, there's a, there's a limit to how much boredom people can have. And watching somebody else zoop something like this is not... Um, all right, let me see if I can do it through the camera. Do it on the other side. It's a little easier. Um, I've been working on this, uh, this bridge right here. And... So anyway, it's just uh, moving it around and around. And I'm using a little one instead of a big fat one on this stone because I've got little crevices I want to get in. So if I'm going down in there and go this way, and kind of around and around. And I can go this way. And I'm kind of around and around. And I also want to bring it up and over this edge. So I'm going to bring it, I'm going to go around and around. One of the things going around and around does is it makes the scratches not all go in the same direction. And that means uh, that it's easier to get them out. If they're all going in the same direction, they start reinforcing each other. And, and uh, um, if they're going around and around in different directions, um, they don't all build up in the same direction. So it's easier to get it out. Now, I'm leaving... On this one, this face was just bright and shiny, and I'm leaving that. I'm not cutting on that. I'm getting the rest of it to join that face. Isn't that something, huh? Wow, you know? So oh, maybe this is the upside, huh? It changes as you as you cut it, and and this is actually it, 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 you know if we can see. Um, probably not. It's transparent. Uh, you, the light passes right through it. Um, so anyway, and, and there's another kind of 
technique that I use, and that is I hold the wheel sideways on the edge. And the edge is really important on opals because um, they're kind of glassy. And, and if you do them this way, that high speed is taking chunks off of the edge of your stone. If you do it this way, and up and down and round and round, you can sort of meld them all together and not break your stone. And if you're putting, uh, you know, if you're going to set the stone, you can put an edge on it by controlling the angle right there. And so if I'm going to put a bezel around that and set it for my lovely wife or friend or something, then I can do this. And I can lay a bezel up there and hold the stone in place. And this way you're not going to break your stone. And you can look at the edge and look at the way the light plays across the stone. And sometimes you see you know, places that you missed or scratches that are in there that you need to get out because the light's passing across it at an angle. Um, sometimes I use the, the reflection of the stone. See how that reflection is? The reflection of the stone right here of the light on the stone shows you the surface. And if there are any irregularities, it'll show up in that reflection. So you can control this really well because it's not really fast and I'm not gouging on that at all. I, I'm just barely touching the stone uh, and I'm letting the, the speed of the, the machine do the work and being gentle and going around and around and around and moving the stone constantly doesn't get hot, right? People say, oh, you got to use water because it gets hot, but it doesn't. It doesn't. I've been doing it this way for years and, and uh, um, it's a lot less messy this way. Uh, and you don't have to dunk it in water all the darn time. And, um, and it turns out nicer, actually. I, I get better results this way. Unless, of course, I run it up against the edge of the river. In which case you get big chunks out of the edge of your stone. So don't do that. It's pretty forgiving. When I first started, a long time ago, uh, I started with these things and I thought, man, I'm going to hurt this son of a gun because I thought it was a piece of glass. Uh, and it's not. And you're not going to hurt it. And, and you can... Uh, uh, you can always get it out with one of these. These The sanding steps is where you get rid of all of the scratches of, from cutting. Uh, and, and you use your, uh, your phone or a magnification of some sort, and you go in there and you look. And you make sure that you don't have any cutting scratches in this uh, reflection here. And we can blow that up, and and you can see I I'm, I've got work to do. But the sander really gets it out pretty quick, uh, and you can turn the speed up, you know. 
Um, I'm leaving it low because this is the first time I've used this machine. Um, and, and this uh, this is a, a flex shaft. And this part's getting kind of warm, but my stone isn't. So the next step is I, I've got a, a bucket full of these things. The next step is usually a brown one, but I don't have any brown ones that are uh, have survived well enough to, to do. Um, I'm going to try this green one here. And maybe get some new ones uh, before I do this again. This goes in there, and the change is fairly easy. You can uh, actually use one of these. There's a little hole here. Bump. And there you go. Bump. Uh, this thing comes out, and you drop it in your bucket, and this one goes in, and you get another one out, and uh, put it back in the hole. And you tighten it up. And now I've got a polishing thing that I can uh, kind of run on my on my stone and um, get a good idea of what it's doing in there. And you can use all sizes of this, see? This is really cool. Uh, I mean, really cool. When you're doing this stuff, these things are the answer to sanding right here. They take uh, all the guesswork out of it, and you, the green one is kind of the third step, actually. Um, and I'm, just doing a demonstration here today, not actually sanding for. Uh, I am sanding. I, you know, just working. And and you can see my thumb's right underneath it there. It's not getting hot. And I'm, you know, putting some pressure on there so that I get some, some results. And the results are good right away. And uh, you can see them. Quick. And it gets in all the little crevices, which is way cool, huh? <laughs> wow, man. Check it out. So that's kind of step one for sanding when you're cutting by hand. Let's see what we can do to this side. We'll hold it by that thing. Show you my old crippled legs. Actually, my legs aren't crippled, my heart is. You guys knew that. Probably.
So it's not a real tough job with the little zipper thing or the brush thing. Because um, it does actually get in all those little holes. Um, now, you know, sometimes like this hole right here, it's a little deeper than that brush gets into in some places. But in, for my use, I don't care. Um, when I when I want to get in there, I use a, a piece of um, a uh, uh, felt tip, and, and my felt tip will get down inside of there, and I use polishing compounds. But as you can see, this stuff, these little brush things, get those scratches out pretty darn quick. And, and you know, I can use all sides of them. See, I, I, I couldn't get into this side by coming at it by the side, so I'm coming at it from the bottom, and I can go like this, and around and around. And that's how you sand an opal you're cutting by hand. Ooh. So it's not as fast as a lapidary. There is that, you know. I, I will grant you that. Uh, with a lapidary, you go zoop, 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 um, and they're they're basically done in you know under an hour. Um, and if you're in a production setting, even faster than that. Uh, but I've never been in a production setting. I cut for a la Lightning Ridge miner for. A few years, uh, he'd bring me a bun, you know, a couple of parcels, uh, and pay me in opal. So I'd been um, practicing on these kind of opals, and and the ones she'd bring me had too much sand in them for commercial purposes a lot of times, uh, because because they are doing zoop 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 and and doing it fast. Um, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm just not in a hurry. Um, and that's always a, been a problem with me. I'm never in a hurry, man. Which, you know, my employers didn't necessarily appreciate so much, but I did. Since when I was fixing cars, I had to uh, eat my own mistakes and, uh, you know, do them for free. So I did it at my own speed and didn't make mistakes. And, uh, you know, or at least not on purpose, not by going too fast and missing a step or something. And with this, it's very forgiving. Uh, you can go back and, and um, you know, take out scratches with your sandpaper and then come in and do a couple of brushes with your brushes real quick. And, and actually doing the brushes is kind of fun because the results are so spectacular when you get done. Look at that, man. It's like a party going on inside of there. Uh, the orange color is, is uh, rare in opals, uh, almost non-existent in Lightning Ridge opal. Um, and I, I've seen a few of the, these uh, Ethiopian opals where, where you get it. And then I also cut uh, um, Indonesian opal, uh, the black wood opal. And that gets real big, big stuff. Um, but it's more like Lightning Ridge Opal. It, it looks more like Lightning Ridge, the patterns and all of that. Um, so uh, 
the orange is kind of spectacular to me because it's so uh, unusual. And I, I was, you know, with the red in there is getting to be Starfire Stealth Red. And it kind of looks like the great state of Texas or something. Look at that. You can always tell a Texan, but you can't tell them much. And uh, we're going to sign off with that. I'm from New Mexico. <laughs> we love Texas.